guys, if you have just recently joined the 30s and above club like me last year and you're finding it really difficult to find a makeup routine which works alongside our age of skin, helps to improve the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles, likes to lift the eye area, um, gives us a more youthful appearance, um, but you're looking at the internet and you're like, oh my god, everyone is like 21, they're doing all these makeup techniques, it makes me look worse. I'm your gal. <laughs> Um, this is the makeup demonstration that I am going to give you that you will never ever look back on. This makeup demonstration is filled with many little tips and tricks which are going to make you feel more confident about makeup going into your 30s. Anyway, if you're interested in learning how to do this look, do keep watching. I don't know why I'm doing this so much. We are 30, flirty and thriving. <laughs> no, we're not. We're all tired and old. <laughs> Hopefully you will appreciate this look as I am just going straight to bed after this so I'm going to take it all off. Um, so I done this just for you. So it is Friday night and it is officially a year and something since we've officially been in, since the first lockdown. I'm not even like taking away that tiny little break that we got back to normal-ish because that can just sod off. So <laughs> it's been a whole year and uh, I've got into the habit of not really wearing any makeup. Sometimes I wear it maybe once a week. Please excuse me, I'm in such a stupid mood. Um, obviously, I'm not drinking because I'm pregnant. Uh, I'm just hyper on life. So <laughs> let's get started. You don't need a demonstration on how to put your hair in a ponytail, do you? No. I'm going to maybe use this little hairband too, just because I'll feel very cool when I wear it. This is uh, this is a serious video, but I'm also in comedy mode a little bit. So I'm going to make it a bit half and half because nothing wrong with a bit of comedy, but also a bit of uh, education, if you will. So, obviously I said to you already that this makeup demonstration, I need to stop doing stupid voice, is, um, is for those 30 plus. Now, that's not to say if you're under 30, you cannot follow this. It just means that you go on the internet and you look for makeup demonstrations and it's all... 21 year old, 20 year old. No one's doing makeup for our skin or our age, right? And the problem with that, you're getting fine lines and wrinkles and finding the way to do makeup for our skin is what is needed because if you do something slightly different with your concealer and go from looking tired eyes, dragging your face down to looking snatch and young and that that's a terrible description but i'm going to show you what i do to keep my skin looking young and fresh um without looking over the top coco the clown you get me so first of all let's talk about texture because this is an extremely important subject i'm going to be totally real with you a lot of instagram makeup is edited to the max so they will have zero skin texture right and all these especially younger people or people that are our age they will look and they'll be like um ne i'd like they never feel they never feel like they'll live up to that because no one has like super smooth skin with no texture and no pores like it's just not a thing that nobody does so i just want to tell you now that it is normal to have texture to your skin but i can teach you the ways and to have as least texture as possible without using photoshop or editing and things like that so Number one most important um, tip of the day for keeping skin looking as least textured as possible and as smooth as possible is skin prep. This is extremely important for somebody over the age of 30 because this is when we start to get dry areas and fine lines and wrinkles. You can probably see right now as well, I don't know if you can tell, I'm starting to get like fine lines and are driving me nuts um, under there. So prep is key. So basically to cut a long story short, if you go from zero to 100, nothing to just makeup on your face, it's never going to last throughout the day. It's going to settle in your fine lines and wrinkles. And also, most importantly, your skin is going to try and draw moisture out from wherever it can get its source from. So if that's your foundation and you find throughout the day it starts to go patchy, it's most likely because it's like your skin is parched and it's stealing moisture into your skin. So you want to make sure your skin is properly prepped, properly moisturised, to get that smooth appearance. So I'm gonna tell you my skin routine and what I do, and I'm not trying to sell you anything. I do actually use this product in my salon, but I just love them. I'm just being honest with you. Anyways, without further ado, let's start a cleansing process. So we always want to cleanse your skin before. So I use the Eve Taylor Balancing Cleanser, and that is a four combination skin, so let me show you. 
Um, this bad boy is absolutely massive, isn't it? So it's got lavender and jasmine in it. Um, so I'm just gonna pop a little bit on my hand like so, rub it together and we're just gonna massage it into our skin, always working up the way. Because like I said, we're trying to get as least fine lines and wrinkles and you do not want to drag your skin down any further. Don't forget to get your eye area, eyebrows, chin, or don't forget your neck. I forget that every time. I'll get to 90 and I'll have such a smooth skin and my, my neck is going to be like a turkey. So once we've massaged it in, we're going to take a bowl of warm water, which I do have at the side, and either a face cloth, or I've got one of these, it's just a mitt that I use for facials and I'm going to have to buy more when I start doing them again. Um, you don't want the water to be too hot, you don't want it to be too cold, just um, in between. So we're just going to wipe that off. Um, so we're then going to tone our skin. Toner, balance and toner by Eve Taylor. There is two ways you can do this. You can spritz it on your face or you can spritz it onto damp cotton pads and wipe over your skin. Or you can take the lazy way out like me um, and I just spritz some on my hand and gently rub it into my skin. Right, so this is when you're like, right, slap my moisturizer and done. Mm -mm -mm. The under eye area in a person over the age of 20 is starting to, you'll see in yourself, fine lens, dry, sometimes you get dark circles, sometimes you get bags, because let's be honest, we're all working like psychopaths, looking after the kids, not going out partying because everything's shut. <laughs> And when we're trying to keep young and youthful and we can't bounce back as easier as somebody that's in their 20s does. So sorry, 21 year olds, we're very jealous of you. But I have started using an anti-aging eye cream. This is like, the, the, this is like my liquid, it's not liquid gold, but in my head it's liquid gold. But it is the advanced nourishing eye complex and it, I cannot live without it. It just smooths my under eye area without making them puffy. It reduces fine lines and wrinkles because of the rice bran and tripeptides. Is it tripeptide or tripeptide? I'm gonna say triceratop. That's a, that's a dinosaur, Vicky. <laughs> um, it does help with dark circles as well. So you only need a minimal amount, like maybe a pea-sized blob, and you want to put it on your ring finger, um, and just rub them together a little bit and just dot it under your eye, and gently just work in. Is that clockwise? I can't even think clockwise. Again, you don't want any pressure there, but then we're going to do our balance and moisture, except there's a googly eye on there, Vicky, I don't know why that's there. <laughs> I really don't know why that's there. Um, <clears throat> so we're just going to take a little bit, like so, um, and don't forget your neck, because I keep doing it, and just massage it up the way. So the last um, step in your skin prep, your last step in your skin prep is um, a lip balm. Now I suffer from extremely dry lips and if you have dry lips and then your lipstick is gonna peel, it's not gonna sit nice, it's just never gonna be the same. I'm using the Eve Taylor Seal and Protect Moisturising Lip Balm. I'm in love with this product. Like I say, like I do use this in my salon. It's very reasonable, the price. It's aromatherapy based but it's actually affordable. You know, you go to a spa and you get a lovely facial and then they try to sell you the products and you're like, I just really wanted, like this was a gift. I don't want to spend any extra money or I don't have a lot of extra money to spend. And then they whap out a cream that's like a hundred quid. I'm like, no, important step number 1.5. <laughs> Once you've done all your prep, you're going to leave your skin for 10 minutes before you put anything on it. 10 minutes is the ample time to let your moisturiser soak in so your foundation is not going to go patchy later on, um, but it's also moisturised enough that it's not going to be too dry. So whilst the moisturiser is actually soaking in, I'm going to quickly tell you my other skin routine that I do. So like I said, I exfoliate my skin twice a week because I have combination skin. If you've got oily skin, you want to do it one time a week. One time. <laughs> What was that? <laughs> Mainly because you don't want to overstimulate your skin to produce more oil, because the more oil you're going to produce, the more spots and blackheads you're going to get. Um, regarding exfoliators, this is also very important. You want to go for something gentle. There's so many different exfoliates out there, but whatever you want to do, you want to go for a fine one, nothing too rough. So now this is soaked in, because I have paused it. 
primers. Let's talk. Let's talk about primers, right? For me, I have tried many different primers. For my skin type, particularly, I am absolutely in love with Urban Decay Optical Illusion Complexion Primer. Do you like how I had to look at that there? Because I can't remember which one it is. It comes in a box like this. I've spoke about this before. Oh my god, it is like liquid silk. It makes your skin so smooth, and it makes it last all day. I make it as smooth as possible, as least textured as possible, and this is your gal. Oh, I'm gonna show you how I apply it. Not everyone applies this the same, by the way. Always make sure you wash your hands. And you're gonna think I'm using a lot of product, and I probably am, but it just makes such a difference on my skin. So I'm just gonna pump a little bit out, and just massage it into certain areas. So I'll do this whole side of my face first, and don't forget to do your eyelid and your nose and right in your chin. And then we're going to do exactly the same on the other side. And don't forget your neck because Vicky, leather neck, Jack, <laughs> keep on forgetting to do that. I don't know if you can actually tell, but when I look in the mirror, my skin already has that bit of a glow. Um, without any foundation on. Okay, so let's talk about foundation. So, you get many, many, many types of foundation, as I'm sure you are aware, um, and it can be quite overwhelming sometimes to decide which one is for you, how much do I spend, can I spend, can I buy a cheap one at a super drug, do I have to buy an expensive one, what's it like on my skin? I've tried many foundations. So I've got my top three foundations for three different skin types. And this is also important. You want to pick your foundation based on your skin type. Now, I'm a snob when it comes to foundation and base things. Um, so I'll always go for higher end products for things that are going on your skin, such as bases um, and concealers. If I'm going for things like eyeshadows, I don't mind spending a lot less money because you get the same result but with um, foundation if you want longevity and you want something that's not going to clog your skin you might want to spend a little bit more money so if you have really oily skin st lauder double wear is your foundation it is brilliant There's pros and cons to everything pros are it lasts all day you could someone could chuck a bucket of water over your face right and it will still be there you could cry it will still be there it will not go streaky it is brilliant the only bad thing is it's a little bit more effort at the end of the night to get off but if you are cleansing your skin like you should be and um, cleanse tone and moisturize every night you will be good as long as you remove it um for combination skin which is mine i personally love mac studio fix Ignore this bottle, it, it is the skankiest thing ever. I need a new foundation. So I use two co two colours to mix together because that's how I get my perfect shade. I don't feel like any shade is the perfect shade for anyone. So I like to mix a little bit of NC15, NC44 just to get my perfect colour. Um, that's really good tip as well if you've got like fake tan on or something and you're trying to match it or you're naturally tanned because of the sun and you don't want to go and buy a whole new foundation, buy the darkest of your foundation and mix it with the colour that you usually use. Top tip of the day. Um, and if you have dry skin, Georgie Armani um, liquid luminous silk foundation I think it's called. It is amazing. Because I'm mixing them together, I'm going to show you how I do that. Um, some people, you could have like a little palette type thing, but for me, I can't bother with that, so this is what I do. Um, I'm just going to obviously take my foundation, my colour that I use, the NC15, and I like to do three pumps of it here. Um, and I'm going to take a brush and dip the very, very end of it into that foundation, the darker one. And when I say a little bit, I mean a little bit. Let me see how much. This much. So I'm just going to use this brush to mix that in until um, it looks all even. That's more my colour because I've got a little bit of tan. I don't know how I'm ginger. Um, so the other important thing is for a smooth foundation, a foundation that you do not want to go cakey, what you want to do is do really, really thin layers. So I do three very thin layers as opposed to one thick layer. If you do one thick layer, you're gonna, it's going to collect in your fine lines and wrinkles. Um, and it's going to go cakey throughout the day. So you're just going to dot little bits onto your skin. 
Um, and that is going to go cover my whole face. You don't, because I see get out, oh my God, I see girls on TikTok. And I feel like, man, you must spend a fortune on foundation because they put so much on. You do not want to do that. That looks great on Instagram, but if you see them in real life, it's going to look cakey. I can categorically tell you. So the brush that I like to blend it in with is one of these. It's actually a contour brush by Real Techniques. The Cellamon Boots, the Cellamon Asda and the Cellamon Superdrug and I love them. It's very, very quick to do your makeup and it's just so smooth in. So I'm just going to gently buff that around in circles and then um, stipple, stipple, that way, stipple that in, that word. It cringes me out. So just gonna gently do it. At first you'll be like, it's not making much of a difference, but remember, we're building up the layers. So we're gonna do. I'm gonna fast forward my blending because um, it's not that fun to watch. Um, we'll just blend it a little bit down there and I'll come back when I'm on my, like, to go on my second layer. So we're on that second really thin layer. So just popping that on. So I think I'm about to start selling you lottery tickets. Pop it on and that's ball number five. I don't know what you're thinking of what I'm talking about when it comes to the lottery because I haven't done the lottery once since I was 16. Once. And I always say when I win the lottery, I'm going to do this, but I never do it. <laughs> okay, so we're going to blend this in, exact same movement. We're just going to... Stipple that in all over the skin. See if I watch this back, I'm gonna be like, Vicky, you're breathing as like Darth Vader. So I'm just gonna do a little bit in the eyelids as well, just to give it a little bit of base. Um, and it'll come back when I'm on my third layer. Actually, I meant to say to you, here's another tip. So if you have that area on your nose, you know where you have like slightly open pores and you feel like they look textured no matter what you do or you have little fine and fine lines and wrinkles and you just no matter what you do they just show up in foundation and look worse what you wanted to do is use your brush and do different strokes so you're blending in but you also want to move different ways and really get into the open pores um, because you've used your primer bearing in mind so it's just really going to help to cover them fine lines and wrinkles because you want to get right in there. Blending properly is key. Or you know if you have the lines on the side of your nose. This brush is perfect for that because you can do all different angles to get right in there. Just do not be afraid. That reminds me of are you afraid of the dark. <laughs> so I'm going to do my forehead and come back and do the third thin layer. So you want to make sure you get right to your lip line because there's nothing more than doing all your makeup and then having a white mouth. Um, okay, so I'm just going to do my little third layer. Um, so it might seem like because I'm putting on loads of layers, I'm caking it on. But I promise you, it will not feel like that on your skin. It feels quite light on your skin. But that is because I'm only doing like little, you know, little thin layers. So I will come back once I've done that and I will show you what our next step is. Every time I feel like I'm done telling you tips, I just remember things. So the other thing as well is you always want to make sure it's blended right into your hairline because there's nothing worse than seeing someone with foundation, especially if they've got like fake tan on and they have a big white gap. It just looks very obvious that you've got loads of foundation on. So you want to make sure you've blended all that in. Same with your neck. We know that from the 90s, you know, or the 2000s when we used to have orange faces. And then I'm not, I'm just using like a, I've not got any product in my brush right now, by the way, to blend. Okay, so that's your foundation done. So you may think, Vicky, that looks really smooth. But you'll be surprised at what I'm going to do next. It's going to make it look even smoother. So I am now going to show you a little trick called non-invasive plastic surgery. I'm joking. But I'm going to show you how to give yourself a facelift using concealer. Um, and when I say a facelift, I mean an under eye lift, obviously. I'm not a medical worker, it's makeup. So I'm going to show you on one side what um, I'm going to do with my concealer that's going to make my eye look lifted up, look younger. I've made this mistake before. Before I hit 30, when I did my concealer, I used to do big, massive triangles, blend it in, Bob's your uncle. Now, because I'm over the age of 30, that then drags my skin down because uh, 
optical illusion of the big triangle. The point is down here, therefore it's bringing your eye down the way. It's making you look older, it's dragging your skin down. So this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take our concealer, and this is, by the way, this is Estee Lauder Double Wear and Concealer. I will never change from this. It stays in place forever. Even if you cry, it's perfect. Um, I just love it, it just never budges. So what we're gonna do is we're still gonna do a triangle, but instead of down there, we're gonna bring it up the way. Bring it all the way up to here, because what that's doing is bringing that eye up the way. So you're lifting. Do you see? Right now you're gonna be like, what are you talking about, Vicky? But I'm gonna show you the difference. So just to blend this in as well, I use the same brushes for my foundation and I just stipple it in. You're gonna be like, oh my god, that's amazing. <laughs> Don't know if you'll see it in that voice, but right enough. So Blending that in. You also don't want to use too much because again, I see a lot of girls TikTok, Instagram, man, it's caked on. But if it's like that, it's going to give you um, texture under your eyes. It might look good in Photoshop, but in filters, but in real life, it's going to make it look um, textured and rough. You know, do you know what? 30 is a good year. I love being 30. I actually do. I feel so comfortable on my own skin. Um, I feel like less worried about things. <laughs> I'm not embarrassed of making an idiot myself. Right, so I don't know if you can tell. I don't know if this is obvious in the camera, but in real life, right? That is brought all the way up. My eye looks lifted. It looks nice and light and it looks concealed, but it doesn't look obvious. It doesn't look some big random white patch. It just looks so natural. I'm going to do the other part of my concealer which I'll do before I do the other side just so you can see kind of the whole look. So I also like to put on a little bit of concealer just under here where I would put my contour. I like to put some on my upper lip, just a little bit, I've put too much there. Just down on my chin as well. Just stippling as well. That's going to give it really good blendability. I don't know if that's the word, but it is now. Um, to the chin area. The reason I do my cupid's bow here as well um, is because I like it to look lighter. It makes your lips look slightly bigger. The area is just a lot more flawless. It's a lot smoother. And it's not that that size bad, because it's not. But if I'm going for a full coverage look and I want to do glam for a night out, I like to look the full shebang, I like to look flawless. Um, that would be perfect for a day out. Although I'm very extra and have to do the whole thing, even going on a walk. Um, I'm just going to blend in a bit more. So yeah. Mm, mm, mm. I'm going to do the other side and come back to you. So... Once you've done the other eye, we're going to talk about um, powder and longevity and what is the best way to set your makeup without drying your skin out. So there's two products I use for this. One of them is pressed powder and this one is MAC. I think it's, it's NC15 as well. And the other one is just a setting powder here, which I'm going to tell you a bit about because you're probably like, Vicky, what is this? I'll get to that first. But before I get to that, I'm going to use this powder here. Ugh. I'm using a big... I need a big fluffy brush here and we're just going to gently apply a fine layer of powder over our skin. You don't want to go over the top because you don't want your skin to be too matte, but you want it to be set properly. So I'm just going to take little bits. If you've got really oily skin, you can afford to use more than the average bear. But for me, it would dry my skin out if I went over the top. Okay, so once you've just gently applied this on, I'm going to show you what I do with the setting powder. So this is extremely important. You need to listen like so carefully with this. Everyone on YouTube and TikTok um, who's 20 and less than 30 basically talks about baking. Now, what baking is, is it's something that you eat in a roll for breakfast. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, it's the art, the art um, of applying setting powder on an area of your skin and leaving it um, to bake if you will um, and then you wipe it off afterwards so there's two problems with this when you're over the age of 30. One, uh, if you do too much powder which they whap it on like 
they've dipped their head into a baby powder factory, you're gonna have really dry textured skin. Uh -uh, you do not want that, especially under your eyes when you're over the age of 30, it's gonna show up all your sins, okay? But I do like to use it a little bit because it does stop my under the eye area from creasing, but you wanna be so, so careful with how much you use. So I'm gonna show you the perfect way to use the perfect amount without looking like a crusty donut. <laughs> so the brush I like to use to apply this is one of these. It is a fluffy eyeshadow brush. And I forgot to tell you, these brushes here are by Jaclyn Hill, Morphe brushes. Um, it was an eye brush yet about. I'm in love with it, it's so good. So it's really, really fluffy. As you see, it's not gonna allow you to put too much product on, um, on the brush because it is so fluffy. It looks like this. It does look like a towel compounded factory. Not gonna lie, it's not the same thing though. It ain't the same. We're gonna put a little bit in the lid, bear with. So I see a lot of girls applying this with sponges. Um, like I say, like just so much. You don't wanna do that. You wanna take the tiniest amount, tap off and just gently press it under your eye. Like so you can barely see it. You, I can see it in the mirror. You probably can't see it there. the tiniest amount under your eye area. Then, just because I'm very extra, um, I like to use a little bit where I put that concealer underneath where I would do my contour. And that's just gonna, so I can highlight my cheekbone, which is above. It sounds stupid highlighting my cheekbone under there, but if you're using this underneath there, it just helps to carve out. So, and I'm gonna use a little bit of the nose too. And the reason I do it there is just cause I get super oily there. And that's where it kind of likes to, that's my problem area with my skin. So what we're going to do is I'm going to leave that but for very minimal time. We're not going to leave it for 15 minutes. We're not going to leave it for 10 minutes. We're going to probably leave it for about two minutes. And when this is cooking, <laughs> baking, um, I'm going to do my eyebrows. So if you're not really that confident in your eyebrows and you take a little bit longer, you may want to just wait two minutes, then take it off. Because the more you leave it, it's then going to soak all the moisture out your skin. You're going to be like a crusty giraffe. <laughs> No offense to giraffes, I know you're not actually crusty. So brow wise, I like to follow the shape of my natural eyebrow. I use the Urban Decay eyeshadow. Um, I don't even use a brow powder, it's an eyeshadow and it's called the color Buck. I just love that for my uh, gingerness. Um, and I've got a very fine like um, angled brush. So it's very hard to do this um, for far away, but we're just gonna follow the shape. I don't like them to be too harsh. I keep seeing everybody doing this whole giant eyebrow across the face thing. Um, but I think it can be quite harsh on me. But again, I am ginger and that just makes everything look harsh. So we're just... And we're only using very, very fine brushing motions. Like this, gently, gently. I was going to say, how did your garden grow there? What's that? Something, something, how did your garden grow? Oh, I don't know what I'm talking about, Vicky, shut up. Okay, so I'm going to come back and do the, um, once I've done the other eyebrow, um, and I'll show you what to do with the powder. So now that your two minutes has passed, what I'm going to do is just sweep away that um, setting powder. Just remove it completely. Give it a good old wipe until it's gone. Um... For me, it just, it does smooth out the under eye area, but that is only because I'm using a tiny little bit. Like I say, if you used more, we're gonna look crusty. We don't want that look. So, don't know why I'm pouting. We're gonna go into contouring. So, contouring, it comes in a few forms. Uh, you can use powder or you can use cream. I personally prefer powder. Again, it's just not as harsh. Um, and what I don't wanna do is have big random unblended streaks on my face um, so I'm gonna go with powder and I'm sure exactly what I use my favorite contour and powder of choice is this one by Smashbox it comes um, with different things so this has got blushers in it as well so it's got blushers in guava rosy and then it's got contour bronze and highlight I never really use the highlight I don't really understand the point of that it's not it doesn't really give you that glow if you will so I'll show you a different highlighter but I'm gonna be using the contour and the bronze color 
So I like to use this brush, right, and it is the oldest, scabbiest brush, and I've had it since college days, but I like it because it's quite thin, it gives you that good contoured, chiselled look, um, but also it's not too harsh. Um. So, we're going to take the colour contour first of all, we're just going to take a very tiny amount, we're going to gently blend it in, very, like I'm using that so lightly, like it's very really tickly, using it so lightly. And the other thing is you don't want to come clo too close to your mouth, just up in this area. Um, for me, uh, kind of, if you go like this, because your cheekbone is, the whole point of contouring is you want to chisel out your cheekbone. So that's what we're doing. Do it exactly the same on the other side. And again, you're almost just tickling it on there. The most professional word of all time, tickling on the contour. We want it to look natural. We don't want it to look like you've got mud on your face and you've been doing an army camp assault course. My forehead is quite long. So the what I'm gonna contour my forehead and what that does is that, so contour darken, the darker the area, it hides it, highlight brightens. So if I wanted to hide part of my forehead because it's a giant, or make it look smaller if you will, I'm not hiding it, I'm making it look smaller, we're gonna just use a little bit of contour up here as well. And that just helps to give the illusion of hiding something or making it smaller. I don't know, sometimes I look like I've got a normal forehead, sometimes I look like I have 10. And I'm feeling like there's 20 today, so we're just, <laughs> and again, we're just tackling, but make sure it's blended into your hairline, very important. Like you see, I'm building on it rather than slapping on too much and then being stuck with it. Um, and then just as well, I'm going to do my actual jawline as well down here, like, um, so we're just using the same colour contour. Tickling it on. <laughs> I don't know if you can see here, you can, it's very, very subtle. What we're gonna do, and I am gonna contour my nose, but I'm gonna do the after. So we're gonna use some bronzer. So I've got this colour in bronze. Um, where you've done the contour, we're just gonna go slightly above it here and just do the same action. Blend it into your contour, but tickle it on. I personally do not like a shimmery bronzer just because it reminds me of the 2000s. The girls allowed era where we just slapped on too much bronzer, especially when you're ginger, you know. But the same colour as my hair. Do the same, I'm just doing it on my forehead as well, just to I bring that down a little bit, just to brighten up that area. Okay, so um, I don't know if you've noticed this in the past, but I have a very squint nose. Um, I've got a big bump in it, I'm going to show you, I'm going to be honest, I'm going to show all my flaws here, look at my big bumpy nose, it's a ski slope and I hate it, but I'm 30 now, I'm beginning to love it, because we can change that with the contour, so I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with this. I want to take a very, very fluffy fine brush, I like to use this one, it is called, actually, the set. it's called a setting brush, um, and it is by uh, Real Techniques, again at Vazda Tesco Superdrug. Um, I don't know why it's called a setting brush, but I love it for nose contour. So we're going to take the contour colour again, um, on the very end, tap off any excess, and we're just going to do a small line down each side of your nose, um, and then just on the end as well. And that is literally just trying to hide my bumpy nose. I'm also going to put a little bit just at the top of here where the bump is, because you know, darker hides. If you've got a really wide nose and you're looking to thin it out, what you want it to do is um, do two darker lines, thinner together there, because that's bringing your nose in. Um, and I'll show you what to do afterward. Just use the same. Again, so gentle, because you don't want to have too big obvious lines on your nose. You're, you're meant to be able to not see it, but no, it's there, you know? You know, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna take the, the bronze colors well, and I just like to use a little bit of this as well. And on the end. So it does look different, but it doesn't look different if you know what I mean. Like if I didn't do it, I would look like a potato, but if I do do it, it's natural. So 
that's my nose contour done um, and this is where we're gonna go into blusher so i'm gonna use the color guava it's use this brush and it is i think it's called a blusher br it's called a blush brush and it's by real techniques again again as the tests go yeah that you've heard it all before so we're just gonna take a little bit and just gently pop on the apples of our cheeks again i've been guilty in the past of looking like Rosie and Jim, we don't want to do that. So even if you were building up thinner layers, that's what you want to do. Little, thin, thin, little, thin layers. Okay, so that is our base done and I know I look a little bit strange because I've got no eye makeup on. So that is what we're going to do next. So I'm going to go on to the most exciting part and that is eye makeup because right now I look so strange because I've got my eyebrows, I've got my foundation, I've got my contour but my eyes are blank. Right, if you're wondering, Vicky, why is the light changed? Do you know why? Do you know why? Because <laughs> I spent the whole time filming this video and I got to the end of the chunk of the eye makeup and it didn't save and I was absolutely, I nearly cried, I'm not even joking. So this is actually Sunday. Um, and I'm filming the eyes um, and then I'll slot back in the rest of the video. So on Sunday, again, I'm just doing my makeup for no reason, just for you. Let's talk about eyeshadow primer. So one of the most important things for longevity and blendability um, on your eye makeup, for me anyways, is an eye primer. So my favourite eye primer of all time is Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion. It even looks like a little potion bottle, it's so cute. So um, it is really good. So all I'm going to do is just take it out here and just apply a little bit on my eyelids. Like so. And then I'm going to use that same foundation brush just to blend it in. So the same brush and we're just, um, again, the word stippling. <laughs> stippling it into your eyelid. So we're just popping it in there so it's nice and blended in. Okay, now listen carefully because this is extremely important. After you've put your primer on, you absolutely need to set it with powder. If you do not set it with powder, blending is going to be an absolute nightmare. So, that same MAC powder, I'm just going to put a fine um, layer, the pressed powder, over the top of it just to set it. So again, I'm just taking this and this big fluffy brush and just gently... Perfect. I'm going to show you a really, really simple way to do a smoky brown. One that's going to lift your eyes up, not drag them down, not make you look like an owl. Now, first thing you have to understand about eye makeup is always trust the process. Because at the beginning, you might think to yourself, this is going to look stupid and it looks ridiculous. But by the end is done, it's going to look great. I promise. You just need to stick with it. I've said to you before that I'm an absolute snob when it comes to bases and foundations and I use really high-end stuff. But when it comes to eyeshadow... Oh my god, Revolution palettes are amazing. This one here was £12 from Superdrug. And back in my day, back in my day, in the 2000s, if you bought like eyeshadow or something from Boots Superdrug, it was always terrible quality, but this is the bomb. Um, I have so many different, different palettes from them um, because there's just such an array of colours. So the next thing you want to make sure is you have good brushes. So I have two brushes that I'm going to use right now and they're both fluffy ones. This one, I don't put any product on it, I just use it for blending. And this is the one I'm going to put product on. So the first thing you always want to do when you start doing a smoky eye is start with the transition colour. You're going to be thinking, Vicky, what on earth are you talking about transition colour? Go away. Basically what that does is it's going to be the original base colour that all your other colours are going to blend into. It's going to look more natural, it's going to blend better. And remember what I always say, if in doubt, blend it out. <sighs> I'm out of breath after that. So... Um, my transition colour that I'm going to use for this is, it doesn't actually have a name on it, but it's basically just kind of like a light browny taupey colour. The most important part about eyeshadow is exactly like your foundation. You want to build up thin layers and you want to blend every time. Um, big thick layers are never going to blend as well. So I'm going to show you how I apply it on my eye as well. Um, so I'll be lifting up the eye area. So I'm actually just going to do one eye so you'll be able to see the difference. Um, and then obviously I'll just do the other one off camera. So I'm going to take a bit of this colour and always remember to tap off your excess. So I'm just going to gently start to blend it in the way. You always want to go up and out the way when you're lifting your eye. You don't want any dark or bright colours in the inner corner because that's going to make your eye look smaller. So another thing is we're not going to start up here. We're going to start down here and blend up the way. If you start up there, you're just going to have to keep blending and blending 
all the way to your eyebrow and you're gonna have that kind of cocoa clown look. So like I said, just keep building up the colour. So you can bring a little bit of this um, this transition colour into the inner corner, but make sure you don't put anything new in your brush. Wait till there's like basically nothing left in your brush and then just blend the rest into that. And I'm doing small circle, light circular motions. If you're using too much pressure, that's also not gonna blend it correctly. So it's very, very light circles. Once you've got your transition colour on, I'm going to take that other brush I showed you and that's got no product on it at all whatsoever and we're just going to use that to just help to blend it out a little bit more. So I'm going to take another transition colour um, and it's one that's just slightly darker, this one here. I'm going to do exactly the same. I usually press it in a little bit where your um, crease line is and then again gently just blend it out circular motions. Bringing it up and out. So lifty dies up and out. So don't worry if um, the first time you do this, it is a bit messy. The more you do it, the more you get used to where your placement should be. And if you still have a little bit messiness up there, you can always blend it in, don't worry. But just try not to bring it too close to the eyebrow because the last thing we want is colour up here. Because like I say, we're layering it up to get that smokiness. You can start to see the kind of shape take place and you can really see how my eye is starting to lift up and look um, larger. Because I have quite small eyes. If you look at them, they're quite small. So as you can see, this up and out the way is bringing it up. Just to blend it out. Okay, so we're going to use a different colour now. So we're going to use this slightly darker brown colour here. Um, and I'm a bit crazy when it comes to colours. I like to use like four or five different colours on the eye um, just to get that kind of look. Again, what we're doing is we're pressing it in to the crease like this and then we're blending it out. So you can see the shape starting to take place. Again, I've got not, like hardly any of my brush now. We're just blending it in that way just to balance out the eye. So again, circular light motions. So I'm quite happy with that shape. Um, all I'm gonna do is just, I've got like hardly any of my brush again, just do that to balance it out. Um, and then I'm gonna use that fluffy brush to blend it out. So I'm then going to go on to use a darker colour right in this crease line here and that's just going to give your eye depth. So I'm, all I'm going to do is just take this darker colour here. Again, I personally like to use a fluffier brush. It's not too big, but it's not too small. It's a bit like the Goldilocks of brushes. <laughs> um, I like to use a fluffy brush just because it gives you more control over the blending and it's not going to be too much product on your eyelid. I'm going to take a little bit of that. And I'm just pressing it into the crease line again. So this one, I'm not going to bring it into the inner corner um, at all because that's just going to close our eyes up and make them look darker because what we're doing is again bringing the um, eye out. But we are going to blend it in still with the circular motions. And with this colour as well, you don't want to bring this one up as far. I am going to work on the inner corner here and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do that because we're going to be placing glitter on there. But before I do that, I always go to underneath the eye. I just That's just the order I do it in. So I'm going to, so some people get afraid of putting stuff under their eye and I can see why. Because you automatically think, I'm going to look like a raccoon. But we're not going to look like a raccoon. I'm going to show you how to do it so it makes your eyes pop. It balances out the eyes without looking like a raccoon, basically. So the first thing you want to do is take a really, really small fluffy brush. I'm going to use this brush here and it is, again, Jaclyn Hill GH40 and it's really, really fluffy and fine. And this is my go-to under the eye brush because it makes everything blend so much easier. So you're going to take the same colour, same transition colour that you started with here, tap off any excess and we're just going to go underneath the lash line and blend that in. 
So with your transition colour, you can bring that down um, a little bit more. But like I say, the dark, more darker colours you start to use, you want to keep the darker colours closer to your lash line to avoid the raccoon look. But I'm using exactly the same colour here and I'm just building on it. And I just build on it till I feel it looks right for my eye to just keep blending it out. So we're going to do the same order of same colours. So the next thing is going to take the darker transition colour. I'm going to... So if I was to do like full on smoky eye up there and not anything down here, it looks so weird on me. And it sounds funny because you think it would make your eyes look smaller, but because it's a kind of lighter colour, it's helping to make your eye look bigger again. We're going to get in the next colour, which is this. I don't know if you can tell here, this one here. Uh, exactly the same. This colour I'm not bringing as far down. So just to give you a close up, this is what it should look like. I know it looks a little strange right now because I've obviously not got any eyeliner on, but stick with it because that's the next step we're going to do. We're going to use the, use the glitter on the inner corner and we're going to go with eyeliner and things. I use this cold pencil and what I'm going to do is just very gently, you know, keep tickling it on, tickle the colouring. We're going to tickle the colouring, not even on your waterline, just under here on your lash line. You're using it so, so lightly. Um, and I'm sure you have to blend out afterwards as well. So I'm just going to do the other eye. So you can see it's very subtle, but once you've blended that out, it's going to make your eyes like adds to the kind of smoky smog look rather than the owly emo look that we used to go for when we were younger. So use this teeny tiny brush and it's by Jaclyn Hill Morphe brush and it is the JH39. Use this tiny little brush here and use this darker colour here, which is the one we used um, on my eyelid and we're just going to go over that liner really gently with that colour and that's just going to help blend it out and smog it out you're still doing it really gently but enough to kind of smudge it in So we need to take the end of this brush by Urban Decay and just use this to buff this out. Like so. For, regarding the waterline, I just like to add to the really smoky look um, since it's like a glam going out look. So I'm going to show you what this pencil crayon sorry, looks like. It just looks like this and it is amazing. So we're just going to put that on the waterline um, just like this. It is really dark. It is really important to set that because that's what's going to give it longevity. So I'm going to use a really, really tiny angled brush to just press some black eyeshadow on top of that line. So this is the angled brush that I'm going to use. It's very small um, and I'm going to go in with the Smashbox. Um, it's just a black colour um, real, and I love this because it does not budge and it's just super good quality and it doesn't go everywhere. So we're going to dip it and really gently tap off any excess and just apply that on, just dab it on top of the liner. So what we're going to do, because we're going to be using a really nice glitter colour, we're going to prepare the um, inner corner here um, for that purpose. So I like to use my double wear concealer again for this and I've got a, bl a, a brush sorry, as well that's just square shaped. Um, so I'm going to just put a little bit of concealer on the back of my hand. You want to use such a small amount, you don't need a lot. And a lot you don't need i'm not planting lettuces vicky you don't need a lot make sure you've got your powder to hand when i say powder i've just using like a really natural kind of eyeshadow here and um, to put on top of that after just so it's um it's set i'm gonna use this brush here and um, to, to put the powder on to set it afterwards so all i'm doing is taking that concealer off the back of my hand i'm gonna use this mirror here um, and just pat it on the area where you want it to be so this is where i'm gonna have the glitter 
I like it to have it like a half, a half cut crease. Sometimes a full cut crease can be a little bit too harsh. So that is why I'm only going in a little bit. So what you want to do is take that flat brush as well. Use your pale colour. And just pat it on and help to blend it out. This should just create more structure. And a better base for your either your colour. Um, or your glitter that you're going to use. And it makes it stand out a lot better. It does make a difference, but it's really subtle. So we're going to do exactly the same on the other side and it'll come back. For applying your glitter, you need a few different things. First of all, you need your glitter. So this is what I'm using here and it's just a really nice copper colour. Goes with my ginger hair. Um, I'm going to get some eyelash glue and I like the dual glue. That is the best glue you can ever buy. Um, and a tiny, tiny, tiny little brush like this. Just so you can be really precise with where you're putting the glitter. So the first thing you want to do is pop some eyelash glue in the back of your hand and let it go tacky for just a couple of seconds. Apply some on the back of my hand here. You don't want to use too much. That's very important. If you use too much, man, you're going to stick your eyelids together. I'm joking. You don't want to use too much because it'll just be harder to um, stop going tacky. Do this side first just because it's easier. I'm going to take a little bit of the glue on this brush, tiny little amount, and we're just going to start to gently dab the glue where you're going to put the glitter. Again, you want to be very sparse with how much glue you're putting on. And it does go sticky quite quickly, so you want to then go in and dip it into your glitter. Tap off any excess. And just start to gently apply that on top of the glue. You want to work quite quickly because if the glue dries, it's not going to be able to blend as easy. patting it on as you see right now that's not blended with that but we're gonna um blend that with the shadow afterward so well the brush I was using to actually apply my eyeshadow in the first place I'm just gonna use that brush with the colour just to help blend it in a little bit more at the side no extra product just a brush so at this point you can apply some liquid eyeliner and I do usually actually use liquid eyeliner for a night out. I'm not going to do it today just because it's waterproof, it takes ages to get off and it's Friday night. Um, and I do actually need to buy some more on its dregs and there's nothing worse than using draggy liquid eyeliner because you're never going to get a crisp line and that is going to be the bane of my life. So I do like sometimes to wear false eyelashes but it's Friday night and I'm not going anywhere so I'm going to just use my favourite mascara and I like to use this one as my MAC and I think it's a false, li false lash effect mascara, I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. So I'm just going to pop this on my lashes. So I love to just build this up as well. It's funny because I've not worn like mascara in ages because I've not really been anywhere. So it feels so funny to, to do it. So I just like to build it up. And do it under the eye as well. So I'm just going to go and do the other eye and then we'll get back to you. You can really see the difference between this eye and this eye with no mascara on it. Like, I can't believe the difference. It just makes your eyes look much more awake, much, much more um, open and more youthful. So what would a nice makeup, <laughs> um, young makeup be if we didn't have a little glow of some highlighter? So I said to you about Revolution stuff before. I'm in love with the Revolution highlighters. That was literally something like £8 and it is amazing. So I'm going to use the two colours. I like to use the gold one and this slightly, I don't think it's more bronzy. I use a bit of both just very gently. You don't want to look like Christmas tree so you just need to very, very gently add a little bit on. I'm just going to highlight these high areas of your skin. Think highlight high. Um, again, very subtly. I'm going to pop a little bit in the tip of my nose. Just personal preference. Really like to do it in a little bit in the bridge. And then we're going to put a bit on the cupid's bow. And then on our chin. So basically this looks very, very subtle. 
but it looks youthful. So as one ages, one's lips get less plump and they get thinner. So what we want to do is bring that youthful plump back. That youthful plump back involves a little, tiny, tiny little bit of overdrawn, but not to the point where it's noticeable or really obvious. Um, I know very overlined lips are very in right now, but I like it to look more natural. So I'm using three products. First of all, I'm using the MAC Lip Liner. It is in the color um, Spice that goes with so many so many different colours. I'm using Anastasia Beverly Hills Lips, uh, Liquid Lipstick in the colour Stripped. That is one of my go-to nude colours. Um, and I'm also using Lip Glass, which is a lip gloss, and A20, and it's also Spice, and that's by MAC. So, lip liner. I'm going to show you how I do my lips to make them look plump. So first of all, what you want to do is get your pencil and make sure it's sharp enough. I sharpened mine for the last time I used it. It's not tip top sharp, but it will do. So I'm just going to start with the bottom and I'm just going to gently draw in. Follow my lip. So I like to follow my natural lip line to start with. So if you look at my lips naturally, they naturally point down the way and that stresses me out because I makes me look like I have rest and bitch face. So what I like to do is just make this bit more even to the top of my lips. So all we're doing is gently overlining it but I'm just going to add to the line we've already done so it's going to look really natural and nothing too much. We're going to be blending this in with lipstick by the way so you'll not see it. And a lip. And then we're just going to do the same on the bottom. Right now, if I look at myself, I look ridiculous. It reminds me of Christina Aguilera in the 2000s, where it was really popular to have really dark lip liner, and then that was it. But we're going to blend it out with actual liquid lipstick, so it's not going to look like this. It comes in a bottle like this. You see, it's kind of like a taupe brownish colour. Um, I have that, and I have another one called Crush. And if I'm using more pinky colours, I'll use Crush. Um, and if I'm using more brown colours, I'll use this one. So I'm just going to sort of lighten that. To bring it down to where the liner is. I want it to be more blended. The liner's just acting as an agent to really shape the lips um, more precisely. This is a matte colour, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that dry for a few minutes till it goes matte. And then we're going to go in with our lip gloss, and that's got a bit of colour in it too, so that's going to brighten your lips back up. Um, and make them look super glossy and very youthful glam. Take my lip gloss. It's actually called lip gloss, by the way, not lip, not lip gloss. What a funny name, eh? So I'm just going to add that on top. And This does not feel sticky as well, love it. And it's going to last all night. Your lip gloss is going to be tucked up, but your liquid lipstick and lip liner is going to last all night. Like, and I mean all night when you drink juice and things. When you drink juice. That's because I'm drinking juice until the baby's here. When you drink your juice and I out. There we go. So your final product before you're done, before you're going to go out, is you want to use setting spray. That is particularly important if you're going to be wearing a um, McCamp face mask. It's not going to rub off on your nose, your foundation, everything's going to last all night and you'll be good to go. I come in from a night out and everyone's so shocked because my makeup looks exactly the same. Good prep is key. So I really like to use MAC Prep and Prime and it looks like this. Um, and it's just, you just spritz it straight onto your skin, give it a few minutes and you'll be good to go. I'm not going to put it on tonight obviously because I'm just going to go and take my makeup off again. Um, but yeah, so this is what the look looks like. Hopefully you'll appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a good Friday evening, whatever you're up to. Bye.